Hey guys, Brandon Davenport from TechGulp.com, and uh, today I'm going to be reviewing my new favorite all-time iPhone app um, for the iPod Touch and the iPhone um, for my favorite thing ever, Twitter. Um, this is truly um, an app that takes the whole Twitter experience and not only bundles it up and makes it possible for you to do it from your iPhone in a way that makes sense and uh, almost adds to the experience but it also makes it so um, you can do things in the free version that you're not even able to dream about doing in other paid versions and not only that but there's even more stuff to do in the uh, the two different paid versions there's three versions so um, I'm getting ready I'm gonna go grab a snack and then we're gonna go uh, we're gonna go jump into this app and see what it's all about Today we're going to be looking at a one of my favorite apps for the iPhone of all time um, and iPod Touch. I'm using uh, an iPod Touch right now just to demonstrate it. Um, it's for Twitter and uh, it's called Twitbird. But I just want to go over quickly of all the different Twitter apps. Um, there's a lot of them I have. What else do I have installed on here? I got uh, TweetDeck uh, and Twitterific. I really like Twitterific. TweetDeck I find really clumsy and unstable. But the best Twitter app that I came across while I was chilling out last night is Twitbird and I think it is going to win your heart over and you're going to use it for everything Twitter. Um, it's available in the App Store. There's there's a it's a really neat um, pricing model that they did. They have three versions. You know how usually um, on the iPhone they do two versions, a light version and a pro version. They actually went and did a free version, a pro version and a premium version. So um, the free version is obviously priced at free. Uh, the premium version is priced at $199, and the Twitbird Pro version is priced at $299. And I think um, taking a spin on this pre uh, freemium model um, really uh, makes it a pleasurable buying experience, being able to buy the version that's right for you. Personally, I recommend the free version because it includes everything that you need. And believe it or not, it include it. In the free version of this includes more stuff than the paid version of Twitterific and other Twitter apps do so that's a real plus so we're gonna go ahead and launch up Twitbird right now um, to start off there's a multitude of themes that you can choose from I'm using uh, I forget what it's called it's a dark theme though which I really like um, so uh, when you load it up you can see your main um, your main screen like all your tweets like you usually see and uh, we're gonna go ahead and find a tweet that we like but first I wanna see if there's any new tweets so all you have to do to refresh is drag all the way to the top and then release to refresh It'll find new tweets, and hopefully people have tweeted. No, nope, no new tweets. So we can go and browse. There's one from Kevin Rose. So we can click that tweet. It'll bring us to here, and it'll show um, the link, like everything in his tweet that we can click on and stuff, and his profile and stuff. So we can go ahead and click on Kevin Rose's profile and see, oh, he's in San Francisco, founder of social media site dig.com, um, 250 people he's following, and a million followers, which I can never dream of getting. So we can go ahead and, and go back. And you can even view people's avatars just by clicking on their avatar. You can see their avatar. And, and not a lot of people realize that in this picture with Kevin Rose, he actually has a, uh, a ceramic dog with a cigarette in its mouth. Um, Kevin Rose, I don't believe, smokes, but I think it's pretty funny. Um, just to let you know, this app is ad-supported. So there are ads at the bottom of every tweet that you click on, but I don't really find it a nuisance as long as you stick to above here. As long as you skip, stick to above here, you don't really need to worry about anything. Um, but anyways, we'll go ahead and click on a link. So we'll click this link right here, and it brings up a couple options where you can save the link. You can uh, Instapaper or read it later, or you can read now. So I'm going to read it now. Opens up like it, like it would in uh, in TweetDeck or, or Twitterific. It loads up the web page, and you can go ahead and view the web page like you would in Safari. So that is a real cool thing. And you can also, I believe, um, click this and you can open the link in Safari and you can also mail the link, which is super versatile and um, really makes this app shine. Just a few features like that. Um, also, you can go through, just like in uh, Twitterific, a filter thing. It's not as pretty, but uh, you can s simply filter things. Um, so that's basically the the meat and potatoes of what this app is meant to do: retweets and um, you know whatever. But the next thing, the main course, is what you actually do on Twitter: is tweet. You gotta tweet. So there's a little button down here. Every app has it. 
compose a tweet. And this is where this app totally blows every other app out of the water. Um, I'm going to go over quickly its landscape and portrait mode feature. Right now I've locked it into landscape. So if I switch to portrait, a little sign will come up that says, oh, it's locked in portrait. And this is handy if you know, you're know you lying on your side in bed, just reading your tweets or whatever, and every time you want to turn it like this, you still want it to stay um, portrait because your head is turned like that. And every time it switches to landscape, you have to like MacGyver it so it stays in portrait. But this way, I can switch it like this, and I can unlock it so I can go back to here, and then flip it again, and it should go to landscape. And then I can lock it in landscape. Whoops. Let me just lock it in landscape. There, now it's locked in landscape, so I can go like this, and it won't change to portrait. So let's make a tweet. Um, let's see. Just reviewing Twitbird, so I did a tweet like that. And you can also um, do really neat stuff. Um, you can click this button right here, and it'll bring down. You can add a picture or take a picture. You can add an audio recording. You can add some some sound clips. You can at reply somebody. And this is where another place this blows every Twitter app out of the water. You don't have to go and find a tweet, then use it to at reply. It actually brings up uh, a contact like application. So in your iPhone, I want to find, um, let's see, uh, Ricardo. Start typing his name. There he is, Ricardo. So found him. Click on him. Look at that, at Ricardo Trejo. This is awesome because you don't have to manually type in the names and worry about, like I'm paranoid about spelling their name wrong and at replying the wrong person. So that is a huge plus for me personally. Um, so uh, we can go ahead and just write garbly goop because I don't really want to, obviously I don't want to tweet this. So there's another cool feature where I can close this and I can save it as a draft. So if there's something that I don't want to tweet right away, I want to think about, um, I can go save as draft. And now what we're going to do, now that we've done all the stuff that we need to do in the main screen, we can go in and do some pretty cool stuff in the home screen. And what this allows us to do is it allows us to manage multiple accounts. So right here I have the tech help account and I have my personal account. So I can click on my personal account and view my home screen. So that's all the tweets um, from my friends and people I'm following. My at reply, so people that at mention me, um, that that any tweet that has my username in it will appear there. Um, direct messages, um, favorites, my tweets, um, following lists. So there's my lists you must follow. So I can click my list and I can see everything that's popped up in my list. Um, also, you can go into tools and you can turn on um, hello, pu push notifications. Everybody loves that. And there's my drafts. So I can go into my drafts and say, hmm, oh, there's my there's my draft right there so I can go you know what this is ready to publish send so that's really handy and another thing that's super handy is drafts is when you're using an iPod touch obviously you can't tweet wherever you are so what um, this app allows you to do is tweet wherever you are say it as a draft and when you get home and you're chilling out you can publish all those tweets and it'll actually show up as if you have as if you had tweeted them at that time so you can actually appear you're using a, a fancy schmancy iPhone um, also, you can find nearby tweets, trends, um, you can view your profiles. We can go ahead and click my profile. We can see our own profile. Um, uh, public timelines, we can see like the, twi the universal Twitter public timeline. And that is really, um, that's really like the overhaul of what this app has done to um, what I experience when I'm using Twitter. Um, I think this is probably the best Twitter app you can use to date. Um, it's free and they have all different versions, uh, again, three versions that you can use. Um, I'd, I'd give this the number one Twitter app of the year. It's, it's absolutely, it's a charming experience and I think it will um, really improve your, uh, oh, there's Borat. I don't want to open any links from Borat. Okay. But um, yeah, go ahead, try it out. Uh, go to the App Store and search Twitbird. Um, it's not very popular right now, but I'm really hoping it'll get more popular. And uh, remember to spread this review around and uh, follow me on Twitter, um, twitter.com slash itsbrandond. And uh, follow Tech Help on Twitter, um, twitter.com slash techhelp. And uh, I'm Brandon Davenport for techhelp.com. And uh, see you guys later.